And welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori, and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers are the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook, and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. Hi, y'all. Y'all come on in. We're fixing to make some zucchini squash marmalade. And it's going to be some good stuff. So y'all come in and join me. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut up our zucchini and our squash. Now a lot of times when people make a marmalade, and especially the zucchini marmalade, they want to um, shred it up. And I just really don't like that texture in a marmalade. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel these. First I'm going to cut them up just a little bit. And then I'm going to peel them. And after I peel them, we're going to, I'll show you how I like to cut, whether if it's fruits or vegetables for my marmalade. I, I just have a certain way I like to cut them because I, I am a person that's uh, real careful about uh, texture wise. So we got them cut in half so I can easily handle them. And uh, you may have a peeler. I prefer just to use my Rada little peeling knife. These are the best knives. I've used them for years. Um, you can buy these off of Amazon. There's different places you can go straight to their website. I buy mine at the Mennonite store and I think some of the Amish stores may handle them too. So I'm going to finish peeling all these. I'm going to peel my squash too. And then I'll show you how I'm going to cut them up for my marmalade. And this is how, what size or how I want uh, the chunks to be in my marmalade. And I'll even go in there. Now this is just the, the zucchini that I've got cut up here. I de-seeded it. If you've got a zucchini that's got any seed in it, make sure you take the seeds out. And then I just chunked it up in little chunks, threw them in my bowl, and I'm just chopping it up. Because Miss Lori, this is just the way that Miss Lori does it. You do it the way you do it. Um, if you want to use a food processor, you go right ahead. If you'd rather have it shredded, you do that too. But this is the, the texture that I want in my marmalade. Plus it's going to cook down too. But this is just my zucchini. Now I'm fixing to peel my squash. My straight neck yellow squash. You can use all zucchini. You can even use all yellow squash if you want to. And I'm going to get them peeled and I'm going to get them chopped up the same way. And we'll see how many cups we end up with after we get it all done. Now we got our yellow squash here cut up. And uh, I de-seeded it as good as I can and uh, cut it up just like I do the zucchini. And now I'm taking my chopper. And I'm just going to chop it up into about the, the size that I like for marmalade. When I get this done, I'm going to put this in my pot with my zucchini that I've cut up. And then I'm going to get my apple and I'm going to peel it and chop it up. Then I'll get my, my orange and I'm going to get the zest off of it or you can just peel it and leave it in, uh, you know, just regular size peelings, or you can zest it either one. Some people, when they make marmalade, like to use zest, and some people just like to kind of peel their orange or their lemon 
and uh, cook it down with the with whatever they're making. And then I'll juice both my orange and my lemon. And then of course we got our uh, crushed pineapple up here. I've got some that I canned up a couple of years ago. I found pineapples on sale. They were 99 cents a piece. And uh, I think I got 10 and then I went back and got 10 more and I canned up a bunch of pineapple. I've not had to buy pineapple, crushed pineapple in a long time. So, I've got that chopped up and let me get on to peeling my fruits. I ended up with about six cups of my zucchini and yellow squash give or take a little bit we'll see how this works out but it was two pounds just a little over two pounds of uh, zucchini and squash mixed together and here I've got my apple cut up I've got the zest of one orange and the zest of a lemon and I'm going to put that in there with my squash now a lot of your fruits have natural pectin in them. One will be your apple and your citrus, uh, your orange. I'm also going to add about 13 ounces of uh, crushed pineapple and I'm going to leave the juice in there. I'm not going to drain it. And we've got juice from that one orange. And we got juice from that one lemon. So we got the juice from both the orange and the lemon, plus we have their zest. Now some people will uh, zest their lemon and orange and then cut the white pith off and then cut the orange and the lemon up and kind of dice it up and put it in here. But for me, I just want to use the juice. But you can do it either way. So I'm going to turn the heat on this. I'll give it a good stir. I'm going to let this cook down and a uh, little bit of skin right there. And then I'm going to let it cook till it comes to a, to a boil. When it comes to a light boil, I'm going to let it boil for about 15 minutes. Now I am going to use pectin in this recipe. If pectin is not something you're wanting to use, then I suggest you go ahead and probably go ahead and put your your lemon, your whole lemon and your whole orange in there. Uh, maybe a, a good size apple. Put After you put your sugar in there, just cook it down until it thickens up really good. But I'm going to use two. I'm going to use a box of pectin. But I'm also going to use my sugar too. But I'm just... Some people don't like using pectin. I use pectin. I always have. There are some things I do make without it, but things like this, I usually put a little pectin in there. So, I'm going to let that cook down and come to a boil. Okay, guys. It's come to a boil. Oh my god, it smells so good. I'm telling y'all, this is what it's all about. It smells wonderful. All that citrus. It's come to boil, and I'm going to bring y'all down here so y'all can see what I'm talking about. You see how it's boiling? Now I'm going to let that boil just like that for about 15 minutes. Okay, 15 minutes, and now you can see how it's cooked down quite a bit. And now I'm going to add a package of Sure Gel Pectin. Now, 
when I show you recipes like this, I just show you because that's the way I do it. Um, if you don't want to put pectin in it, don't put pectin in it. Uh, but a lot of my recipes, I do like to use it. So now that I put my sure gel in here, here starting to talk like a Texan again, um, I'm going to let this come to boil again. And when it comes to boil again, we're going to add our sugar and our ginger. And it's already starting to come to a boil. To a pretty good boil. I've got five cups of sugar. And I'm going to stir that in good. It's already looking good, y'all. I'll bring y'all down here in just a minute so you can see it. And I've got a fourth of a teaspoon of ground ginger. Now you can use fresh ginger if you want to. Ginger has a little bit of bite to it, so I don't like to use too much. About a fourth of a teaspoon is plenty. So now that we got our sugar and our ginger in here, I'm just going to stir this good and we're going to let it come back to another boil and I'm going to let it boil for about 15, well, I'm going to boil till I see it starting to thicken up and I'll time it for you. But I'm going to bring y'all down here and I got my jars over there, my getting hot. Now this is supposed to make five pints. You never know um, from time to time. I'm going to wait and see. See how this cooks down and we'll see what we get out of it. But you can see how pretty it is. I wish y'all could smell it. And that is zucchini squash marmalade. So we're going to let this cook down a little bit. So it starts to thicken up just a little bit. Okay, I got kind of sidetracked, y'all, so I got to get back over here. <laughs> I got uh, Mr. Brown's fishing tonight, and uh, I'm trying to cook me just a little bite to eat, not much. And uh, then I heard the chicken squawking, so I run out there check on them, and uh, I had to get back in there <laughs> to this. Anyways, I was trying to multitask there for a little bit and about messed up. But anyways, it's cooked down. It's looking really good. And, uh, of course, I've got my hot jars over here ready to put in there. Now, I put pectin in it, so after putting my pectin in, you know, I let it cook for about a minute. Then I put my sugar and ginger in there. And then let it cook another minute. Now, if you're not using pectin, after you put your sugar in and your ginger, you want to let it go ahead and just cook till it thickens up pretty good. That could take about 15 minutes. So let's go ahead and fill our jars. My jars are hot. And I'm just going to fill them up to uh, about a half an inch head space. And I've got, I'm going to start out with six jelly jars. I'm not sure yet how much this is going to make. Like I said in the beginning, we got uh, two pounds uh, between the zucchini and squash. We had two pounds. And once we got them cut up, we had around six, six and a half cups of cut up squash. But I mean, it can vary from time to time. But we'll just see how much this makes. And I tasted of it, and it just tastes so good. I love marmalade. I just like that the little bitty, the little bit of chunks in there of fruit, or in this case, it's a little bit of apple and zucchini. But you can't tell it's zucchini. I can tell you that much. It's gonna be so good on a good old hot biscuit with butter and stuff. And I can tell y'all, I have got so much jelly 
and jam and fruit butters in my pantry right now that I mean I'm good for several years and uh, I've got uh, a neighbor that messaged me the other day a couple of days ago and said the pears were pretty much ready would I like to come pick some and um, yes I do because I know they're good pears because we picked them before and uh, we made a bunch of pear butter out of them and Mr. Brown loves pear butter he loves it and uh, he'd rather have it than apple butter he likes pears and these are really good pears so I've got to get over there this week and get them pears picked that's for sure and uh, I can tell you my pantry is good <laughs> it's good on fruit and uh, and preserves and, and jellies and stuff for quite a while but this is such a good idea to do when you've got so much zucchini and squash and you just got to have something else you know to prepare with it and to put up and this is a just a wonderful recipe it's just such a good thing to do so we got our jars filled and I think I can do another one maybe I can fill another one and that'll give us seven um, jelly jars full I always try to heat up more jars than what I think I'm going to need just in case and whoops I kind of overfilled that one anyways I'll get that fixed I'll just have to dip a little bit out of that one and put them in the other ones and evened it out and they're all looking good and that pretty isn't that some pretty marmalade and I mean this it's um this is zucchini and squash marmalade I mean would you ever think it and it's just so good and we're just going to take the uh, debubbler and we're just going to kind of debubble it a little bit before we clean the rims and put our lids on and you know there's so many things you can do with preserves and marmalades and stuff because we even eat um, our marmalades and preserves we eat it with uh, with stuff like pork and uh, you can use it to put uh, when you're baking maybe some chicken breast or something you can you can put them preserves and marmalades over that chicken and, and bake it and it's just it's not just for biscuits and toast now you can use this stuff you can um, you can bake a cake and smear it on that cake you can get you a big old bowl of vanilla ice cream and and you can warm up your marmalade or your preserves and no matter what kind it is and just kind of pour it over that ice cream I mean there's just so much you can do with it put it on a homemade buttermilk pancake <laughs> I'm making myself hungry y'all but we're going to get these rims cleaned off really good get that sticky off there that way our, our lids a, a seal make sure that stickiness as hard as you try not to get stuff on them rims there it's going to get on there I guarantee you I think y'all really going to like this recipe I have my freezer is full of squash and zucchini and uh, I've just done everything I have put up uh, cut up squash and battered it and put it in the freezer I've got uh, a lot going on in the freezer in the pantry and uh, I'm going to be doing some videos on canning a bunch of dry beans up different dry beans because I want y'all to see and understand why I don't I don't buy canned beans in the store I make I can my own it saves money a lot of people don't understand the concept but anyways I'm going to do a video on that because the main reason because I am about out of uh, a lot of different beans that I use especially going into the winter time 
but we eat a lot of beans and uh, I can buy a huge bag of beans and can them up and uh, it'll last me a year. I don't run to the grocery store every time I need pinel beans or black beans or red beans or lentils or um, you know kidney beans or just any kind of bean. I don't run to the store when I need them because I've always got them in my pantry. I save money by doing it. Um, they're just a better bean. So, anyways, there's my canner back there with the water in it. We're going to get our jars in here. And it's we're not pressure cooking these now. We're just water bath, but I, I use my pressure cooker to a water bath too. If, if it's out, and this one was out because I'd been pressure canning, it was already out, and I just thought I'd just go ahead and use it. So we're going to get these in here. And once it comes up to a good boil, we'll just uh, let it boil. I'll show y'all. There's about a good inch, inch and a half of water over my jelly jars. And there's some empty ones in there too, and that's okay. So we're going to let these come to a good boil, and then 15 minutes, we'll come back. Well, Mr. Brown is not here again to taste this marmalade for us, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to have the bad job of tasting this marmalade this morning. i tell you, he's been so busy. But he will be back. He will uh, be tasting something here pretty soon, I guarantee you, because <laughs> he's always tasting something for me. And he always says it's good, whether well, it is or not. Bless his heart. So there's our marmalade. And uh, I could have made me a big old pan of biscuits, but <laughs> Mr. Brown not here. I thought, you'll sit there and eat half that pan. So... I'm just going to show you another way that you can eat marmalade or preserves or anything like that. It's so good. And I do this a lot, especially around like uh, uh, lunchtime or something. I'll just take a cracker. And I dearly love cream cheese. It's just one of my favorite cheeses. And I'm going to take some of this squash marmalade and dab it on there. And we're going to, I'm going to try to put this in my face without making a mess. I don't promise nothing. Sorry, y'all. I don't know how squash can taste so good, but it does. It's delicious. Y'all have to try this recipe. If you've never made it, you've got to. It's such a wonderful way to use up your, your leftover zucchini and squash that you, if your freezers are full and your pantry's full and you've made bread and just all kinds of stuff, do this because you're really going to like it. You know, squash is probably one of the most versatile vegetables in the garden. It comes in all kinds of shapes and sizes, colors, different varieties, and you can do so much with it. I mean, the sky's the limit with squash. Just so much you can do with squash. So if you've never grown any squash, research it. See what you can grow in your area because I guarantee you, you're going to like it. Because you can do so much with it and it just tastes so good. Whether if it's a pie or just, um, just anything, it's so good. I've got some different ones growing in my garden this year that I've never grown. And I'm excited to show you all sometime and we'll do a recipe with it. As soon as uh, I have picked some of them, but they're curing right now, so... Anyways, this is so good, and I hope y'all try it. Uh, zucchini squash marmalade. God bless everybody. We love y'all, and we'll see you in a couple of days.